How are you? Hey, we're doing great. How are you doing? Great. Well, I'm very excited to be speaking with both of you. Ironically, my two youngest nephews are named Tommy and Eddie. So they're, this is easy peasy to talk to you guys. Is it okay if we refer to you as Aunt Debbie? If you want. If you want. Right, you may. I'm calling you Aunt Debbie. That's a done deal. <laughs> And they, trust me, when they were younger, they're just as funny as you guys are. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect with family camp. The trailer does not do it justice. Oh, this is so enjoyable. It's funny as can be. But what really stands out to me is that, number one, the believers, uh, the Christians out there are going to love it. But you're not, this is not a preachy film, so non believers are going to also love it for the comedy. Uh, Debbie, thank you. That, that was one of our greatest desires. Thank you so much for saying that. I kept expecting, all right, when are we getting the sermonizing? And that never comes. You really adhere to the idea of family friendly faith-based, but comedy. Laughter is the best medicine. Laughter unites. Unless, of course, you're Will Smith and he doesn't like your joke. But, <laughs> but uh, there is nothing in here to not like in family camp. I mean that sincerely. You are so kind, Debbie. Seriously, I... Thank you for your kind words. Seriously, that means a lot. Thank you, thank you. Aunt Debbie, I want to give you a hug. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, where did the, because uh, I know that you have, how many hundreds of your short, video shorts have you done already that have been out in churches all around the globe? To now take this to the next level as a feature film, where did the idea come from to, for you to make this leap into something that is feature length because it's one thing to churn out and put out three to four minutes of something but when you're putting out an hour and 51 minutes that's a big leap <laughs> yeah it really is i mean it, it is it, listen it, it was always the dream i mean uh, we're just we really are two best friends who grew up going to movies together and you know we had this opportunity to to, to, to do skits, to do live shows, to make short films, but there was always the dream to make a movie, and it seems really unrealistic. It, it seemed like, you know, those two friends who wish they could, you know, play in the NBA, you know, um, but they're actually 5'6", and very <laughs> slow, you know, but, um, but there was that dream out there, and then you had, you know, some, some Christian movies come up that, that were popular, and people were going to see them, and so that kind of birthed in us that the... the the germ of an idea that, well, maybe, maybe we could do this. And so for the past probably 10 years, we've been acting as if. So if you were on, on the set of one of our short films, uh, we would have many of the same things there that you would have for a feature-length movie. And so we've always been planning for that to happen, just waiting and hoping that it would come to fruition. Well, it certainly has now come to fruition. Where did the idea for this particular film start? Did it start with Brian Cates, who I know has directed your shorts, directed your, your TV, your miniseries, Glory of Christmas? Where did the, the specific idea for family camp begin? Because I got to tell you, anybody that's ever gone to camp, any kind of summer camp, family or otherwise, there is plenty of comedy to be found. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, um, Brian Cates came up with the idea, and uh, then we, we have a lead writer who's wrote, written a lot of stuff for Skate Guys, and her name is Renee Gutteridge, and they, they sat down and started collaborating, and you really are watching a bunch of people that have watched a lot of movies and got thrown into a screenplay and just trying to figure <laughs> out, you know, act one, act two, act three, you know, Where's the conflict here? Where's the conflict there? How do we rise it up? How do we bring it down? Um, you, yeah, it was a crash course for all of us um, with Brian and Renee doing the heavy lifting, and then we would all get there together and just start adding the secret sauce to different things and the, and the comedy bits that we thought would be funny as well for our characters and, uh, you know, for some of these funny, you know, 
funny lines and different things like that to say and do. How structured is this script when it comes to the two of you on screen together? Do you guys go off and ad lib and improvise or is this very structured in terms of the comedy beats? That's a great question. Um, our live show is very unstructured and there's a lot of improv. I think uh, with the movie, it's probably more structured, but we left a little bit of breathing room in there to be able to have some fun. Um, there are several lines that came up, you know, a day of shooting. Let's say this, it's funnier. Um, there's a, a scene where we're in a river trying to drown each other, and that was all improv. <laughs> Um, so, so there's some there's some some improv in there, but I would say it's probably ninety percent structure. Yeah, uh, Debbie, the the scene where uh, I'll just say beasting. Oh God! <laughs> about flapjacks. <laughs> flapjacks is all ad libbed. Yeah, yeah, that was all, the flapjack stuff is all ad libbed. Yeah, and it's hilarious. Oh, thank you. Just when I think I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't laughed, I've laughed more than I have laughed in a long time, then something else pops up in here. The whole honey and the bees w it was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. The family okay. camp antics, the cream pie eating, and, you know, and the, the bouncy ball stuff was just to die for and that was that's a great great kickoff for what's going to come afterwards woven in there though are these great family themes fathers and sons mothers and daughters husbands and wives and it's all very seamless and very organic and that i think is one of the keys to the success of this comedy is it is very organic and nothing feels forced, but there's something for everyone. Yeah, we we really tried. You know, uh, you know, at, at the heart of everything we do, there's there's two high school buddies here that have grown up on movies and TV. And I mean, Debbie and Debbie, you know, you saw us in our twenties when we were just you know, quoting <laughs> lines from TV shows. And <laughs> um, but we we. We've noticed that dads can be the bumbling idiots on sitcoms, and the moms have it all together, and the kids are smarter than both the parents. We didn't want that with this film. We wanted everybody to have, um, and which is just true to life, you know. Uh, everybody can have a hurt or a habit or a hang-up, and families can be messy, but God makes us masterpieces. So we tried to really just instill that where God is the gravity, like you said, the only the only person that preaches is the preacher. Um, yeah. But it's hopefully yeah ordinary people just taking care of things and allowing God to um, come in their life and change them. Well, one of the great things that really comes across by film's end that we're reminded of throughout the film is that it's the flaws that make us human, and why we are not God. And I really love seeing that because, as you said, everybody is flawed. Kids have egos. Kids don't want to listen to their parents. Husbands and wives aren't communicating. Two guys thrown together as different as night and day. It's like they have to rely on each other, but oh, do we really do we really want to? There are so many human flaws here, but they're flaws that all of us have. So nobody is more flawed than anybody else. And that, that was one of our, our great goals, you know. I mean, if you're not careful, you, you, you paint an unrealistic picture, you know. Um, and, and I think that we wanted everyone to be flawed, to be human, you know. Um, it, and, and, you know, wait, too many times some of these movies can fall into a place where, you know, the, the Christians in the movie are all perfect and anybody who's not isn't. And, and that's just not real. That's not true. And, so we wanted to be honest with what life is, you know, and 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 realistically, life is funny of it on its own. Yeah. You know, our, our, long ago, we made our first thing we ever made was a was a CD, and the title was it. You can't make this stuff up. And, and the truth <laughs> of the matter is, real life is funnier than anything you can make up. If you if you'll just make people real, it's going to be funny. <laughs> 
Now, were you guys involved with the casting process at all? Because the chemistry amongst your respective families, the Ackermans and the Sanders, they really feel like family units. I mean, that genuinely comes across. So I'm curious if you guys were involved in the casting process along with Brian, along with the producers. No, no. Yeah. Uh, Bev Holloway was the casting director, and she just knocked it out of the park. It wow. Was so good. The blending. Tommy, you working opposite Lee Allen Baker as Grace, who plays your wife. The, oh. the two of you are spectacular. Well, it's all her. I mean, she, you know, she was the veteran coming in, and um, I, I was, I was nervous. You know, I mean, here she's, she's got a quite a, a pedigree, and she's mm -hmm. done a great things, great resume, and and she was from the the very beginning. She was just a joy to work with, and really raised the bar for all of us. And similarly with you, Eddie, Gigi coming in, the contrast between the two of you is what really makes the Sanders, we see more dysfunction there between the veneer. And the way you and Gigi play off of each other is just wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, so I really do mean this. Like, most of the stuff, Debbie, is everything that we've ever done has just been Tommy and I. You know, even even in our, in our shorts and stuff like that, we may add other people, but for the most part, it's been the dynamic duo of Tommy and Eddie doing something. So it was a stretch, and Gigi was so gracious and so great. She's been a lot of faith-based films. She's been a kid. She's been an actress since she was a kid. Um, so I got to rely on her uh, stepping away from, you know, uh, on those things, away from Tommy, and to have Gigi there to just go, Let, let's do this. And... Um, I don't know if you remember that last scene um, after the award ceremony where I kind of stepped off the stage and I talked to her. Yes. Um, that that was that was all her. We we didn't really have that down, and she wasn't good with those lines. So we worked on that over and over and over again when she came on set. So that's the magic of Gigi right there. I have to ask you guys because, and you just mentioned something really key, Eddie, is that it's always been the dynamic duo, Tommy and Eddie. Other people may come into play in the sandbox, but it's still, it's the two of you. Here, there's a lot, a lot that isn't just the two of you. And you really are developing more of those rubber band relationships with others. Did you guys ever feel like, okay, the apron strings were being cut between you two and you were being thrown out into the wind? in the woods talk about two fish out of water uh, that i mean you no know, debbie like to us camping is a hotel <laughs> well okay that's my idea of camping too yeah you know you runs in the family that's just <laughs> it yeah you know keep me away from the poison ivy and the tree had enough of that growing up there, yeah. there wasn't a summer that i didn't go by without me getting poison ivy i got in places I was I was going to ask that because you got that was truly a rural wooded area. Anybody watching yeah. this, they're going to know, this was not a set. This is really you were out in the woods. And yeah. there's yeah. poison ivy, poison oak, and if you look closely at the screen, you can actually see it on the ground. Oh, I had noticed that. Yes. Oh, if you look 
You will actually see it in some of the forest scenes on the ground. Nobody went through and cleared that out for you guys. <laughs> we'll know next time. <laughs> so I, I hope that because they didn't do that, I hope they brought along plenty of calamine lotion for you. On me, I can promise you that. We had to do a, at one point, we had to do a wardrobe change because my calamine lotion had soaked through my costume. Oh, my uh, God. But did you have the pink or the or the clear? Oh, it was the pink. I don't, I don't believe in the clear. The clear, uh, trust me, I've tried the clear. It doesn't work as well as the pink. Thank you. Yes. So you were very correct. You made the right choice. You wanted the pink. That one is much more effective. I'm really curious for you guys, when you started out with your comedy way back when, did you start out with faith-based, clean comedy, or was that something that you grew into? That is a great, goodness, another great question. Debbie, okay, so this guy invited me to church like in the late 80s, okay? So I didn't, you know, I didn't know a lot of the church, you know, little bells and whistles of everything, so... um the very first thing when I started going to church and said yes to yes to Jesus, um, I said, "Well, what's next?" And they said, "Well, come to you know Sunday morning and Sunday night." And I'm like, "Sunday night? The Jeffersons is on Sunday night. What are you taught? What? Trapper John M.D. is on Saturday. What? No." And so I, I didn't really fit in very good. And then we got these skid books that were, and I'm I'm thankful for the people that came before us, but skits in the '80s were very cheesy yeah you had to get to god really quick you had to get to god third sentence so this would be a typical 80s skit hey joe you seem really sad at school today i was very sad at school today you need god thank you okay that was a skit and then followed by scripture so what we started doing no joke debbie like I, and i don't know where that where the brain synapses comes from but we go we went well we don't we're not going to do any of these so we truly started stealing stuff from Saturday Night Live and trying to make it Christian, faith-based. It's so, really hard to do, Debbie. It's hard to clean those up. But you asked that question, and I think that was our training, was we're going to do Hans and Franz. We're going to do Church Lady. We're going to do Phil Donahue. We're going to do The Liar. We're going to do all these different characters that were bestowed to us on Saturday nights, and then we throw it in the church, uh, in the youth group on Wednesday nights, and that's really how we just started figuring out how to how to be funny um, with with that blueprint and figure out how does scripture and God fit into there. Wow, because I've seen so many faith-based films, some that go to the extreme extreme and are batting you over the head with scripture, with God, with to a degree even some extremist views at times. Then you've got you know the sappy, the the romantic ones. This is really the most authentic faith-based film that I've seen. Yeah, we're, our, our silent, Debbie, is... Um, <laughs> tears. Yeah, you just, you really bless us with your words because that really was the goal. Authenticity was our hope. I love Jen Godson. We've known each other for years. All she does is, is faith-based films. She just did Farmer in the Bell, Santa Land, and I think Robert Amaya, who plays Joel. Robert was in that with Jen. I love her. Uh, and her husband, and then some of these other films that have come out in the past few years. But it's always very heavy, very melodramatic. This is the first time I have seen humor, humor used to bring people to God. And you guys just, you nail it. You real I can't say that enough. Thank you. I, listen, when we when we had the opportunity to make a movie, um, there was questions, you know, that we had, and should we do this and do this? And at the end of the day, where we landed was we needed to be us. We, we didn't need to make uh, a, another Christian film that was like something someone else would make. We just needed to make our movie, and and that's all we did. You know, the the goal really wasn't to do something different or whatever it was to, to be authentic to who we are and I think what you see in this movie is this is who the skit guys are this, this is who Tommy and Eddie are this is our our brand of comedy it is our our mission it is our message you know I feel like we've made that movie that was just true to who we are mm. I've got to ask you guys going from your short skits to a feature 
that's an hour and 51 minutes long. What was the learning curve like for you in making that transition to quote unquote long form comedy? Was there a learning curve? Hmm. That's, that's, I don't, I don't know if there, I, I think, I think we both felt here, here's the simple truth about us, Debbie. Uh, we don't even think we're great actors. So the, I think the learning curve for us really was, um, we have, to, you know, like Saturday Night Live would put out skits of the 90s, and you felt like, oh, wait, those are just 11 skits thrown together, and it really wasn't a movie. Um, so I think the learning curve maybe wasn't so much the comedy, but it was the remaining in a character, being true to that character, uh, staying in form, staying consistent, all of those things for a feature length were... I know I felt the onus on it um, as far as I, I got I got and, and my character, he, he couldn't be a character. He, had, he, he was over the top, but I couldn't make him cartoony. And I think that's where I struggle with the comedy for me is how do I keep him real? But there are moments I have to dip. You know, some of our best movies when we were kids, the John Hughes movies, mm-hmm. Plain James and Automobiles, where when you see Steve Martin – you know, attack Del, you know, Del Griffith, you know, um, uh, John Candy, and, and they dip. I mean, that was like, to me, oh, that's, that's magic. That's acting. That's beauty. And so I think we try to do that. But those, those were the onuses, I think. And what do you think, Tommy? Uh, you know what? You're so kind to ask. I was really thinking about some other stuff, but I thought I'd <laughs> let it ride. Um, I think that I, I, I agree completely with Ed. Um, I think I would give some credit to Brian and Renee in, in writing a script that, you know, uh, Renee has uh, more experience writing some screenplays, so she had, you know, the ability to understand the importance of that, you know, that long form. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I, I guarantee I, I don't have a great memory. That's one of my weaknesses. But um, I'm sure there were conversations that we probably had with them pushing for certain things, and they would be like, no, this is gotta let it breathe you've got to give it time and so you know i you know, debbie we believe that god brings just the right people into your life at just the right time people you don't even know to accomplish great things and for us folks like brian folks like renee like they, they were just the right people to come in at just the right time to prepare us for this and to help us through this well i've got two more quick questions for you since since diana is texting me Time is almost up. Deanna, we're having a great time. (laughs) (laughs) But I've got to ask you guys, number one, will you do more feature-length films? That's question one. Yeah. We we, want to build that that, uh, that, uh, reputation to um, just as you would see any brand out there and you go, I don't like them or I trust them. (laughs) We, we want, oh, I trust those guys. I trust those guys. There's no bait and switch. Um, they, they know how to do comedies, and they're going to inspire us, and they're going to point us to God, and we're going we're gonna to tear up a little bit, yes. So that, that's the goal. That's the dream, yeah, to, to put out more, more of these comedies because all we really have for quote-unquote family-friendly comedies, Debbie, are superhero movies and cartoons. And even some of those parents are like, whoa, didn't see that one coming. Um, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we want to be... Safe, but we we want to we don't want to be safe in the humor or safe when we tackle the issues. But we want people to go. We can trust those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like trusting your kids with their uncle, who he's a little crazy, but you can trust him. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> well. And that will fill a niche that is very underserved in film. So I look forward to that. But now my final question for you. The best character in the film, I got to know what it's like working with him, the beaver. <laughs> well, he was hard to find on set. Uh, he's a bit, a bit of a prima donna, uh, and uh, he kind of acted like a puppet, but uh, he was, oh, he's fantastic. He comes, we watched, we watched the movie last night with mm-hmm. um, a bunch of family and friends and crew and there was tons of kids in there, mm. and the younger kids, i tell you what was just amazing was how 
quiet everyone was. They were. Like, like they were paying attention to the movie, even the kids. And what was so great, and this is, again, I'm, I'm going to credit Brian and, and Renee, is that that little beaver guy came in at just the right time <laughs> that, that, you know, when if, if a little kid might have been fidgety or we might have just dealt with an issue that they wouldn't have really understood that much, all of a sudden the beaver pops in and they are right back there with us. There's so much great laughter, Debbie. Yeah. There's just been, I mean, kids and adults. It's just, it's been, it was really beautiful being in a theater and hearing hearing laughter. And now I feel guilty. We're talking about inviting family, and we didn't invite Aunt Debbie. We didn't invite oh, Aunt Debbie. Well, you know, next time, next time, yeah. I will have to no come. Way. I will say I never laughed harder though than when the beaver fainted. That uh, <laughs> I had that never, I've never girl. seen a beaver faint, and it's that fantastic. just. Absolutely hey, fabulous. Daddy? Yes. Can, I, can we just tell you? You know, Tommy said God brings the right people at just the right time. People you don't even know yet. It's it's been a it's been a long couple of days, a uh, long maybe week and a half. I mean, it's been a long month. You are the right person, the right time. You've encouraged our hearts. I want you to know that. Thank oh. you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that I could. Um, you definitely encouraged me with upbeat. Family-friendly humor, and uh, I can't wait to tell my aunt down in in Omaha, Georgia, about it. She is perhaps the most Christian religious person I know, and she's always looking for good faith-based entertainment. And I think that this is just right for her and her church ladies at Cottonton Baptist Church. So she will definitely hear about. She'll hear this interview, and I'm going to tell her about the film too. Uh, well, gentlemen, I can't thank you enough. This has been so wonderful. I hope we get to do this again in the future. Oh, uh, Debbie, I hope we do too. Please, please, please. It would be so much fun. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, thank you guys so much. Bye, Debbie. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.